Hello boys and girls, today we're going to learn something very special, and that is what pleases God. I'm Pastor Danny. And I'm Pastor Dee. And we're going to sing a song that talks about that very thing. Here we go. All right, are we all set this morning? <laughs> pleases God, right? That's right. Uh -huh. And now Pastor D is going to go over to the whiteboard and share a scripture with, with us, and we're going to learn more about it. Today we're going to be looking at a scripture found in the book of Proverbs, and it's Proverbs 19.5. Well, uh, this particular uh, scripture was written by Solomon, and uh, he wrote most of Proverbs. So let's take a look at it today, okay? It says, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. Proverbs 19.5. So what this is saying is, you know what? If somebody says, I saw somebody do this, and they didn't do it, and they're lying, that's a false witness, isn't it? They're saying that they saw somebody do something that's not true, or they're saying maybe the person did do something and they did do it. It's not telling the truth, basically. So a false witness is, you don't want to be a false witness, that's for sure. A false witness will not go unpunished. 
In other words, there will be punishment for those who testify uh, something that is not true. It's called perjury in a court. And uh, he who breathes out lies will not escape. Proverbs 19.5. So in our lives, boys and girls, you know, basically, we just need to tell the truth. When somebody asks us what happened, tell the truth. You know what? The truth is always the right thing to do. It's always the best to tell the truth. Um, if we don't tell the truth, the Bible says, be sure our sin will find us out. We cannot hide from God. Um, we cannot, you know, hide anything from him. He knows when we tell the truth, and he wants us to tell the truth. He doesn't want us to tell a lie. So it's a good thing to remember. Remember, he always loves us, and that's the most important thing. But be sure to tell the truth. Let's look at it one more time. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. Proverbs 19.5. And now we go to the book of books, and uh, we'll learn a little bit more about telling the truth and what happens to those who tell lies. makes you feel warm all over. I don't know how many people actually believe the lies we told them on Earth. <laughs> yes, it does. And now it's making them feel warm all over. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, I took it with Boston. You've got one good sense of humor. <laughs> well, thank you. I certainly try to keep things light and cheery. <laughs> Look here. It's my favorite time of day. Torture time. <laughs> You know that trick one that you put in with a stroke of genius. <laughs> Those poor idiots out there think we got it made in here. <laughs> well, I figure once a liar, always a liar. If you can't tell them a good lie, why not show them one? <laughs> That's why you're the devil. <laughs> oh, here they come, just like clockwork. <laughs> Boss, you wrote the book on torture. <laughs> hey, does this seem to be getting a little too close to that window? Mm, I think they are. They're starting to press in. You better do something quick. the old wax and the old groove. Well, not me personally, but I've had a lot of people working for me. <sighs> you know, if these people rushed us, we'd be powerless. We're powerless anyway. They just don't know it. And that's one piece of information I don't plan on handing out. Oh, I see. So you think 
thing? Maybe this was all some kind of terrible mix-up? Right, that's it. That maybe your file got you with the wrong crowd and landed you in hell when you should have been in heaven? Exactly. There's no way I should be here. Because like I said, I was a good man. Uh, and I'm sure there's all just some kind of mistake. Yes, well... Well, you know, there has been a mistake. You see, I knew it. This file says you obeyed the speed limit. That's right, I sure did. And that you had the donation across the street. I did that a lot. And you even gave a sizable donation to Farming. Oh, I love Will and Nancy. But what this file doesn't say is that you stole the buy you gave us a donation. What? Don't lie to me, Mr. Bangood. You think I can't tell a lie when I hear it? You started stealing when you were a kid. First it was bubblegum and penny candy and loose chain playing with your parents' dresser. But, uh, uh... And when you got in high school, it was lunches and backpacks and other kids' wallets out of their gym locker. No, please! It was habit you and I kept throughout the years, wasn't it, Mr. Good? <laughs> you thought you were doing all right because you never got caught. But God's word says, no shall not steal. You stole a lot, didn't you, Mr. Good? Oh, please, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> oh, it's too late for that, my friend. You could have been forgiven on earth if you'd asked Jesus in your heart. But he could have cleaned you up and helped you break that nasty habit. But no, you chose to listen to my lies. And now you're going to spend the rest of eternity here with me. No, please, no. <laughs> Get him out of here. Oh, let's go, let's go. Well, I must say that you handled that like the slime bag I always knew you'd be. <laughs> well, coming from a low life like yourself, I take that as a real compliment. Oh, uh, you think that'll ever be anything we can't overcome? Oh, well, I will be that angel that comes to throw us in that lake of fire out there, but let's not talk about that right now. Oh, I'm with you, boss. <laughs> Boys and girls, boy, I tell you, I don't think I'd like to be where those people were. Yeah, the devil can be pretty, pretty angry, can he? He's a stinker. That's, I think it even smelled of smoke. I know that lately we, we've had some fires around here in uh, uh, Lyons and uh, around the area, and we've been dealing with smoke. Uh, and it got pretty hot here. Well, you know, it gets pretty hot. <laughs> in hell too <laughs> and we just saw that uh, uh, public presentation and now we're going to talk about something that really we should consider because if we are sinning it could land us there one day there's only forgiveness in jesus but he gives us so freely you wonder why sometimes people don't respond to him but you know why because the devil doesn't want them to respond to him you know and so he He's tempting us many times. Many times he tempts us, and, and if we give in, uh, we need to ask Jesus to forgive us. Well, we're going to talk about one uh, sin that perpetuates another sin, and that means it brings about another sin. You ever do something wrong, and then you try to talk your way out of it, and we commonly call that a lie. And you know... <laughs> You know, a lying tongue, a lying tongue, and we're, a lying tongue is what we're going to be talking about today. It's like a poisonous snake, and you know, a poisonous snake can kill you with one bite, some of them can. And you know, the snake uses the fangs that are in his mouth like needles to inject poison into its victims. Now, a person who tells a lie puts a poisonous snake into his mouth. It can cause problems. Whoa, my. And by the way, this is, this is Johnny's helping me again today to uh, demonstrate this. And so we find out that if Johnny tells a lie, it's like, it's like a poisonous snake 
It causes trouble. It causes trouble not only for him, but for others too. Well, why do people lie? Well, I want to tell you something. People tell lies because they think it helps them. You know, but when you're wrong, you are already in trouble. And lying doesn't get you out of trouble. It only delays the punishment. And then when that comes, many times it's much worse. And you know, and some people tell lies also to get what they want. They want to impress people. They, they'll tell lies to impress their friends. And when others find out, it destroys their faith in them. You know, I mean, if you've ever heard someone tell a whopper and you knew that it wasn't true, and then you lost confidence in them, in the same way, in the same way, God loses confidence in us when we lie, when we lie. Now, some people also, thirdly, some people tell lies because they're controlled by a lying spirit. And you know what happens? That person lies again and again and again just as Johnny here is having some problems today and again and he or she becomes controlled by that lying spirit and a person with a lying spirit lies for no apparent reason they don't have to they just lie all the time but we must keep that lying snake out of our mouths and the way we do that is with the hammer. Now the hammer, the hammer is God's word. The hammer of God's word. In Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the 29th verse, it says, Does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord? Is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes rocks to pieces? My, oh my. When we are tempted to lie, we get out the uh, we get out the hammer. When we are tempted to lie and to get out of trouble, remember Jeremiah 23, 29. God's word is like a hammer. And come down upon that temptation, that lie, with the hammer. You see, because Ephesians 4, 25 says, Let every man speak the truth with his neighbor. And yet when we're tempted at times to... Uh, lie to get ahead in life, we should use the hammer. We should come against that temptation and know that God's word says in, in uh, uh, Proverbs uh, 19.5, our memory verse this, today, that he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Shall not escape. That means that he that speaketh lies shall not escape judgment. In our puppet program, someone, he had a problem stealing, and when that, he lied about that, you see, he didn't escape the punishment, though, did he? You see, God, God honors truth, and he penalizes those that lie. Now, finally, we must realize that if someone who is, lies for no reason, do you know that God's word can set that person free? If you grab onto God's word and you're obedient to God's word, you can be set free in a moment, in an instant. All you have to do is call upon Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for my lying. Forgive me. And he will forgive you. And he will come into your life and he will be your savior. And you will not have to worry about going to that place demonstrated in the puppet program. For God has a place for you in heaven. So as we close today, I would like to ask you, don't let the lying snakes, there's a bunch of them here, don't let the lying snakes anywhere near your mouth. Come down with God's word like a hammer on those and destroy them before they have a chance to take root in your life. Now let's look at our scripture as we, cl as we close out today. Okay. It's back here, it's Proverbs 19, 5, and it says, A false witness shall not go unpunished, and he that speaks lies will not escape. 
Proverbs 19.5. God bless you and have a great week. And when the temptation comes to you, take the hammer of God's word and take it after that temptation and you can get rid of it. And you can smash it just like I smashed this rubber snake. God bless you and we'll see you next week. May God, and, and by the way, we are meeting. We're meeting for, for children's church and uh, adult church here at San A.M. Chapel. And so we'd love to see you. We know eventually you'll get back with us, but the sooner the better. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.